The adventure story begins by showing a strange planet where a man named Redick got stuck in a bad way. Redick was trying his best to get out of the planet, but now, due to severe injuries to his legs, he couldn't walk properly. Redick looks around but couldn't see anything. But the scary thing was that, on that planet, very strange creatures and creatures were found. Now even more dangerous. Crowd-like creatures try to eat Redick's legs. Even though he was badly injured. But to save his life, he goes into hiding inside a nearby pond. After holding his breath for a while, Redick felt that maybe all the creatures had left from there. But when he came out for a little while to breathe, right behind him was that sheep-like creature who attacked Redick. Redick somehow managed to avoid getting more severely injured by himself. Finally, Redick finds a small piece of iron in his hand, which he throws away to distract the dangerous creature. And now, instead of trying to injure Redick, he starts running behind the piece of iron. Redick finally takes a breath of relief and slowly moves forward. Now Redick reaches a very big cave where he was drinking water, but he already had an idea that all the creatures would come here drying his body smell so he quickly hides behind big rocks. In a short while, another crowd of terrifying creatures arrives, sniffing Redick's body smell. They had come here. But suddenly, large tentacle-like creatures emerge from the water, attacking the crowd-like creatures and killing them. Redick realizes that if he wants to cross the pond, he needs to get rid of these tentacled creatures. However, as he advances, one of the tentacled creatures spots Redick and grabs whatever was in his hand. Redick uses it like a weapon against the creature, managing to fight it off. He defeats several creatures, but Redick understands that this entire planet is filled with these creatures, and he cannot confront them all alone. Therefore, Redick immediately goes into the rocky area and locks himself inside a cave. Now, Redick starts telling about his past, how he finally reached this planet. In reality, a few years ago, with the help of his new powers, Redick defeated a tyrant named Lord Marshall and had become the leader of this new planet. Redick held the complete power of the planet, but after some time, all these things started to seem worthless to him. Actually, Redick already had an idea that becoming a new lord put his life in great danger because whoever became the new ruler of the planet, all the enemies would try to kill him to take his place. This tradition had been going on for years. Redick was deeply lost in thought because every minute, he felt his life was in danger. Once, a lady who worked in his palace had attacked him. But Redick, being quite quick and cunning, easily thwarted her attack and killed her. But Redick knew for sure that this was Vaku's doing. Vaku was the commander of the planet who wanted to become the new lord. So, he was trying hard to get Redick killed. Now, Redick was very troubled by these things. He directly goes to Vaku and tells him that even though he's trying to kill him, now Redick doesn't want this planet or its power at all. Redick makes a small deal with Vaku, saying that if he just lets him go to the Fyuria planet, after his departure, Vaku can become the new lord of this planet. The map of Fyuria planet had been destroyed many years ago, but Vaku and all his people knew about every planet in the universe. So, after fixing the deal, Vaku takes Redick along with all his men towards the Fyuria planet. They had landed on all the planets, and Redick looks around the planet, but something feels strange to him. Then Redick realizes that this is not the Fyuria planet at all. Vaku and his companions had deceived Redick and brought him to an unknown planet where Redick's life would be taken. Redick understands Vaku's plans, and in the next moment, several of Vaku's men start attacking Redick. Due to Redick's speed and fighting techniques, he manages to evade all of them. Redick had almost finished off Vaku's soldiers, but then Vaku destroys the very rock on which Redick was standing. The entire rock collapses from a great height, and Vaku and his remaining companions begin to think that Redick must have died. After that, they immediately leave the unknown planet. Now, Redick's present time starts from here, where he is stuck on this unknown planet. He has no idea how to survive on such an abandoned planet. Nevertheless, he continues to move forward, escaping from the dangerous creatures on this planet. Luckily, he encounters a small creature that is severely injured. Redick approaches the small creature and helps it. Now, Redick has decided to make this small creature his companion. Slowly, time passes, and Redick and the creature survive together on this planet. Redick starts to release toxins from the many creatures found on the planet into his body, 
trying to quickly build immunity to them. He also immunizes his new pet with it. Gradually recovering, many months pass on this planet. Redick's once small companion becomes quite big and healthy. Wherever Redick goes on the planet, his new pet accompanies him, immune to toxins. After gaining immunity, Redick sets out to fight the tentacled creature, eliminating many other creatures along the way. After returning to his pet, it gives Redick a small ball. Seeing the ball, Redick understands that it was made by humans. He starts checking around to find out where the humans are on this planet. Finally, after a while, Redick is shown a research base possibly made by the humans who came here. He quickly enters the research laboratory with his pet. However, Riddick doesn't encounter any humans inside. But the best part was that Riddick found some food items there. Such delicious food items he had not eaten for many years. As Riddick ate, he began to carefully examine the entire laboratory for any useful items. If Riddick found something useful, he found wanted posters there. It was written that if anyone catches Riddick and brings him, they will receive a hefty reward. Riddick used to be a very dangerous wanted criminal before. Now, with his pet, as soon as he steps out, the sky becomes cloudy. That planet was going to have rain, but the most surprising thing was that it wasn't water in the rain. Rather, various chemicals combined from the sky, causing acid rain. These things aren't good for Riddick and his pet at all. That's why Riddick, according to his plan, goes inside the laboratory and scans himself to spread the news throughout the universe that he is present on this planet. Because the only way out of the planet was for someone from outside to come here so that Riddick could capture those officers and hijack their spaceship to escape from here. In a short time, a spaceship arrives inside. Commander Sam is present in the spaceship to capture Riddick along with all his companions. Sam tells his companions to keep the power note safe because it is with the help of this power note that their spaceship gets power and they can leave from here. But Sam knows that Riddick is very cunning. If he gets hold of this power note, he will take the spaceship and leave us here, Sam said, leaving many of his companions to safeguard the power note. Now, Sam's associate named DS is shown to us who was doing surveillance there. At that moment, he sees something written in one place, leave a spaceship here or else die here. Riddick had written that whoever goes here will leave with a spaceship. Now, Sam tells his associate, Luna, to release a criminal. The criminal was a lady whom Sam had released. The lady, saving her life, starts running away from there. But Sam raises his gun again and shoots the lady dead, directly hitting her, causing the criminal lady to fall right in front of Riddick, severely injured due to internal injuries, and dies there. Now Sam, wanting to convey a message to Riddick, screams that they have arrived here, and he should surrender to them quickly, or else his life will be in danger. In any way, Sam wanted to kill Riddick and claim the reward placed on him. And whatever happens, he will remain successful in his goal. Now, Sam's two companions are shown, talking to each other about Riddick. It was clear to them that Riddick has many supernatural powers within him, and thinking of fighting him alone would be inviting death. But now, as per Sam's orders, they will have to fight with Reddy. Now, Sam's entire team is deploying their advanced devices there, which will detect sensors, speed, and all the things and inform them. That means Riddick cannot hide from their sight anywhere now. The ship had already landed in the planet's environment. Two officers named John and Dell had come out of the spaceship, along with their team, to capture Reddy. However, Sam sensed something fishy, suspecting that these people were there to sabotage his plan. Sam was very greedy and selfish. He didn't want anyone else to capture Reddy besides him and take away all the reward. Therefore, Sam removed the power cell from John's spaceship and kept it with him so that John's team couldn't leave without his permission. Suddenly, one night, all the motion sensors installed by Sam and his team started malfunctioning on their own. No one understood how this happened suddenly. Sam and all his companions didn't believe John's words and went to check the devices. But suddenly, one of Sam's companions got trapped inside a very dangerous trap. He was stuck inside a dangerous trap, and Sam's companion lost his life right there. Similarly, Sam was taking Reddy's other companions far away into the darkness, and Reddy easily finished off Sam's companions. Sam was very scared after seeing this, 
so he immediately headed back to his headquarters with his companions. Feeling that all his companions were now not going to come in front of Reddy at all. Sam was very angry and felt like he was the boss there. But Dell, who was standing by John's side, was beating him severely for Sam's useless behavior. Before Dell, Sam couldn't do anything. Then John tells Sam that he will help him catch Reddy alive. But you will have to work under us. John also told Sam that we need Reddy alive for a few hours. After that, you can do whatever you want with Reddy. This doesn't mean anything to us. We know here that John wanted to catch Reddy alive. He had a different reason for working with Riddick and extracting all these things were very top secret. Sam too was so beaten after dealing with John. That is, now he would do what John said. John made a plan with his entire team to first locate Riddick. So now John, by shooting above that stomach of Riddick, would attach a tracking device. Because John knew that this pet would only go to its owner, which would make it much easier for us to locate Riddick's location. Now John, with some team members, goes out to track him by putting a tracking device on that stomach. They had walked quite a distance from the headquarters to a very large cave because they found Riddick's location here. But even after searching the entire cave, they couldn't find Riddick. So John found one of his own men stuck there, on top of whom Riddick had attacked and inserted the tracking device into his body. John understood that this was definitely Riddick's move, so he tried to ambush us. Meanwhile, Riddick is seen sitting right at the top of the headquarters, which was being monitored from the start. When the realization of the entire plan happens, he starts coming back to the headquarters with all his companions. Everyone quickly goes to the safe near the headquarters where the power notes were kept. John and Sam saw that fair trade was written on top of that safe, and Riddick had definitely not written this. John and his companions began to feel that Riddick had arrived here and had also stolen the power notes. But Sam was saying that I always had the key to the safe, so there is no question of opening this safe. However, everyone was still suspicious that Riddick might have hidden a bomb inside it. So now Sam was forced to open that safe. It was surprising that Riddick hadn't stolen those power notes. They were already in the safe. John was slightly pleased with this and started making plans for the next move. Meanwhile, Sam forgets to properly close that safe. Taking advantage of this, Riddick immediately sneaks into their headquarters and steals all the power cells. When John and his companions find out about this, they are quite angry. John then directly attacks Sam to kill him because the key was with him, and due to Sam's carelessness, Riddick managed to steal all the power cells. On the other hand, we are shown Riddick, who was burying all the power cells underground because he would definitely need them somewhere. John, along with all his companions, starts preparing for the next plan when suddenly the environment of that planet starts deteriorating rapidly. That means a very dangerous storm is coming to that planet now. John was continuously talking to someone on his radio, asking for help, but now Riddick appears without informing anyone and starts talking to John and the others. John asks Riddick if a man named William was with you 10 years ago on a dark planet, is that William still alive or not? In fact, the thing is that the William John is talking about was not someone else but John's own son. But Riddick, instead of answering John's question, just says that you all just give me a spaceship, and after that, I will give you one of the power cells. John was not ready to accept this because he wants to know about his son first. That's why now, without giving any information, Riddick starts to leave from there. At that moment, Sam, in anger, points a gun at Riddick, but before he could fire, Riddick's pet starts attacking Sam, because the pet didn't want its owner to get hurt. But as soon as Riddick stepped forward to save his pet creature, he was injected with a tranquilizer, rendering him unconscious. Sam also finishes off that creature. A little while later, when Riddick's eyes open, he finds himself restrained. John now continuously asks Riddick about his son's whereabouts. But without answering this, Riddick just says that you should now be afraid of what's going to happen on this planet, and maybe the way you're behaving, I won't be able to help you in these things either. John was not ready to accept this. He was ready to kill Riddick, but now he needs to find his son's location. So here, John hands over Riddick to Sam, who immediately takes out a knife and is about to cut Riddick's head. Everyone was watching this scene eagerly, but suddenly, it starts raining on that planet, and strange noises start coming from all around the planet in the next moment. Hearing this voice, 
All of John and Sam's companions become very scared because this time it had awakened a flock of very dangerous creatures sleeping inside the planet. And now all those dangerous and lethal creatures start forming a flock. Seeing all this, John and Sam's all companions start getting killed in the attack of those creatures. And now, seeing this situation, John understands that only we can be saved from these creatures because Riddick was immune to the venom of all these creatures along with being quite powerful. Due to there being no other way, John begins to free Riddick. However, Sam stops him from doing so, as Sam wanted Riddick's head at any cost to collect the bounty. The shocking thing happens when John had already opened one of Riddick's handcuffs. Now Riddick is completely free and throws a knife, which cuts Sam's throat. Now, Riddick tells John and his companions that he will save them from this planet, but in return, they have to give him a spaceship. John doesn't see any other option, so he agrees to Riddick's demand. Now, without any way out, he accepts Riddick's offer. Riddick, John, and his companion DS sit on the hoverbike and start leaving from there to get the power cells. They manage to reach the place, avoiding the creatures. Riddick had already taken both power cells out of the ground, but suddenly, for some reason, DS attacks them. Actually, DS wanted to kill Riddick to take all the money and then he might have had the power cells too. Although DS injures John, Riddick manages to catch DS and kill him too. But before dying, DS destroys all three hoverbikes. So now John and Riddick have to decide their journey on foot. In a short time, they sense the smell of their bodies and many scary creatures that were quite dangerous start attacking Riddick and John. Riddick keeps killing every creature that comes in front of him, but the number of these creatures is in thousands. Due to the continuous attack of the creatures, Riddick also becomes quite weak. John realized that maybe even Riddick couldn't save them from these creatures, so John takes both power cells from Riddick. Riddick manages to regain consciousness and protect himself from the creatures. At one point, Riddick thinks that these creatures will kill him, but suddenly, a very large spaceship emerges from the sky, firing upon all the creatures. The spaceship starts landing, and John and his other companions, who had come to help them, are on it. They rescue both John and Riddick. John tells Riddick that they have fulfilled their promise. After that, Riddick takes a spaceship and leaves far into the universe. Riddick goes straight to the old planet where the soldier who captured him, the one who imprisoned him on the Furious Planet, was Riddick asks the soldier about Vako because now he wanted to kill him. But now it turns out that after Riddick's departure, Vako had become the new lord of that planet, and now Vako wants all the supernatural powers that Riddick has. Now Vako has all those supernatural powers that Riddick had, which means Riddick's war is not over yet. But our story ends here.